The circular economy presents an opportunity to transform our current linear system into one that's good for business, people and the environment. But how can we explain all of what the circular economy has to offer? We developed three core principles, all driven by design. And in this video, we're summarising the first of those, eliminate waste and pollution. I think everyone recognises we have a waste problem. There are two ways you can deal with this. You can do a clean up or you can design waste out in the first place. And designing it out is the circular economy way. As you might expect, companies around the world have been eliminating waste and pollution through good design. Let's have a look at a few. A bunch of our fruit and veg at the supermarket comes packaged in single use plastic. The plastic is used to keep the goods clean and fresh, but we throw it away once we get home. Well, Appeal came up with a solution. They've designed an edible plant-based coating that once applied to fruit and veg, slows down water loss and oxidation, allowing the produce to stay fresher for longer. The food lasts longer, less food is wasted, and they've designed out single-use plastic. Next, here's a familiar material, polystyrene. In order to protect delicate goods from damage, they're often packaged with polystyrene. The material does its job, but it instantly becomes a waste problem once we no longer need it. Now, Acovative have designed a circular material which combines mushroom roots and low-value agricultural feedstock. This nature-friendly alternative to polystyrene grows quickly and can be moulded into any shape. And the smartest thing is, once you've done with using Acovative materials, they can be composted at home where they add value to the soil. I could go on to talk about refillable packaging solutions to gene designers who make new from old or how rice husks can be transformed into biochar. The point is, there's already a lot of ingenuity out there. Many firms and designers are living the first principle of the circular economy already. But we shouldn't just look at this from a product level. Waste comes in many forms, including space. If we design buildings in a modular way, then when they're no longer needed as, say, an office, they could be transformed into something more appropriate. That way our spaces will always remain relevant and useful. But what of pollution? Well, as you can imagine, simply by eliminating waste, some of the associated pollution is already dealt with. But the circular economy's power to tackle pollution doesn't stop there. If we design products and services to be circular, and in doing so if we made better material choices and cut out the leaking of toxins into the environment, then there are significant environmental benefits that follow. In our climate change report, we found if we were to apply circular economy strategies in just five key areas, we can eliminate more than 20% of emissions from the production of goods. That's 9.3 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent in 2050. The same savings we'd make if we cut all current emissions from transport to zero. And that's before we even talk about switching to renewable energy, which is obviously something we want to see too. With the right willpower and design, we really can eliminate waste and pollution.